The right to the freedom of speech and expression is the most important basic human right we have. It allows us to create art without fear of organized government persecution for it. It's what allows us to develop different ideas to tackle serious issues in society. It's what grants us our individuality and keeps us from becoming a kind of hive mind controlled by a single dictator. It's also the number one basic human right that's constantly put under attack. Over the past several years, I'm sure you've all seen the videos of people being punched in the face for what they say, driven away from public places so they can't speak, or banned off platforms so they can't spread their ideas. Very recently, Alex Jones was banned from four major media outlets that contain what is undoubtedly the vast majority of his audience. He was banned from YouTube, Apple, Facebook, and Spotify, and now Snapchat is reportedly keeping tabs on his account, and I wouldn't be shocked if they banned him too. He was banned from all four of these major sites within 12 hours of one another, proving that this was a coordinated effort to stifle his free speech. And let's be clear, that is what this was about. Out. People have tried pointing to him breaking the rules on certain sites in the past and citing hatred against people in the cases of Pizzagate or his denial of the Sandy Hook shooting. Now, maybe these people would have a point if he was taken down when those events happened, but as it stands, those happened years ago, and he was never penalized for it, or at least not anywhere near the extent he is now. Because the truth of the matter is that this is entirely about the things he says. You aren't safe on social media anymore because if you don't follow the status quo and if you don't care who you offend, then you're just up and banned for it. This is blatant censorship. People have tried telling me, oh, well, he still has his own website, so he isn't really censored, but really? He had two and a half million subscribers on YouTube alone. I don't know how many followers he had on any of the other apps and sites he used, but I imagine they were pretty huge as well, given his following. When several huge companies conspire against you and take you down all at the same time, severely limiting the access you have to branch out to a wider audience, how is that anything but censorship? Now, obviously, there are limits to freedom of speech, you can't yell fire in a movie theater or bomb on an airplane because that would incite panic. You can't make direct threats of violence toward people. You can't make shit up about them because that's slander. And I think there can be an argument made that Alex has done some, if not all, of that. But again, why take action now so much later after those things happened? Why collude to take him down all at once? Is that not shady? Is that not terrifying? Now let me be clear, I'm not defending the actual shit Alex Jones says. Frankly, I think he and pretty much everyone affiliated with InfoWars is a fucking idiot. They constantly make shit up, deal with conspiratorial bullshit, sell fucking snake oil like his retarded super male vitality. Paul Joseph Watson is one of the guys who spread around the whole soy boy bullshit, yet one of the InfoWars products, that stupid brain force shit, literally contains soy in it. I know that Alex's lawyer apparently says he's playing a character, but let's be fucking honest, we all know that's not true. I'm sure he hams it up a bit, but from every interview I've seen of him and just the fact that I've been watching watching compilations of his shit for years now, really leads me to think that he believes in his own bullshit. So no, despite what people may think, as I've literally been called a Nazi for defending him in this situation, I don't actually care much for anything Alex has to say. However, I'm still gonna defend his right to say it. Social media, be it YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, you name it, is now an integral part of society. It's become so mainstream that news publications reference tweets from the president. Many interactions we have day to day exist through 280 character tweets tweets or comments on Facebook profile pictures. Alex has an enormous following and these companies got together and took him down at the same exact time. That's not a coincidence. Four gigantic companies don't just ban the same guy at the same time with vague reasons as to why they banned him. That should scare you. That should make you worry about the protections we have under the First Amendment. Even if you don't live in the United States, this should still scare you because if you care at all about freedom of speech and expression, this is a gigantic red flag. Yes, these are private companies and technically can ban anyone they want. Nobody's disputing that. The real question is, should they ban anyone they want? Should they silence anyone with a differing viewpoint, even if it's utterly retarded or reprehensible? Because in doing so, that sets a terrible precedent. We've already seen countless people silenced for the things that people deem offensive. Although he's back with a new account now, Rags was banned by a wave of literal communist furries who made up this total lie that he was a Nazi. All based on out-of-context tweets and a joke image of his character in a Nazi uniform. Just the other day, TJ Kirk was banned from Twitter over a joke. Count Dankula is literally facing jail time because his fucking pug raised a paw during a Hitler video, which made a bunch of easily offended Jews get their panties in a bunch over it. And really, this video isn't exactly meant to be about Alex Jones, TJ, Rags, Dankula, or any one person in particular. It's about the principle of free speech and expression, a principle that virtually nobody on either side bothers following anymore. You may have heard about the Asian woman from the 
New York Times who made very overtly racist comments against white people who was recently called out on it, but nothing happened to her. Then Candace Owens, who, full disclosure, is sure as shit not someone I often find myself agreeing with, writes the same exact tweets but replaces the term white people with Jews. She's locked out of her Twitter account. I'm sorry, does that seem fair to you? Does that seem like there's a fair and balanced principle of free speech going on, or does it look more like there's a double standard? Then you have shit like the whole James Gunn situation, where he made fucked up jokes like literally almost a decade ago, jokes he apologized for almost a decade ago, and rather than the people on the right who always try and say that they care about context, nuance, freedom of speech and expression actually defending him, not defending the tweets, mind you, I myself don't defend them. I mean specifically defending him, the person, who apologized for those tweets years ago, clearly is not the same person he was back then and who was clearly just making shitty edgelord jokes, have instead taken to saying, oh, well, I guess it's just the left getting a taste of their own medicine. No, full stop. You don't get to pretend you're principled on the subject of free speech, and then when the same shitty thing happens to the other side, you just decide to become a total hypocrite and turn the other way. Because if you're not going to defend free speech for people that you hate, then you don't believe in free speech. Now granted, from my experience, the right has been more accepting of free speech as of late, probably because they're the ones that most often get censored and have their events shut down. But let's not pretend this is a one-sided issue, because it's not. You have people like Richard Spencer trying to cry about his freedom of speech being infringed upon, but has no problem refusing to let certain people into his events. Then you have people on the left trying to say that, for example, gay people have been persecuted for literal centuries. Which is absolutely true, but your point becomes null and void when you start treating other people like shit while simultaneously trying to use your victim complex to garner false sympathy. And as great as social media can be to spread your brand and your ideas, it's just as easily capable of being used by shitty people to do shitty things. It's become a trend lately to either misrepresent or outright lie about people when they say things that are perceived as offensive. Sargon of Akkad, for example, literally argues against alt-writers numerous times, yet he was banned from Twitter and is now somehow labeled an alt-writer based on out-of-context quotes shared around by his opposition's little echo chamber. While nothing's happened to him yet, my friend Mahler was called a racist because I posted a We Was Kang's comment on his Black Panther video. Mahler just liked the fucking comment, yet somehow he was called the racist even though it wasn't a racist comment in the first place. But that's where the political discourse is at nowadays. Just called call someone an alt-writer or a racist and then take them totally out of context or blatantly lie about them because you don't like what they have to say. And then, after falsely accusing someone of being something they're not through misrepresentation, lies, or taking things they said completely out of context, these people are then banned from certain sites or groups just because some jack-off didn't like what they had to say and called them something horrible so they wouldn't say anything anymore. You can try and argue the whole, it's a private company so they can ban whoever they want line, but let's not ignore the bigger issue at play here. Simply saying something that someone else doesn't like is enough for them to try and get you fucking fired from your job now. Remember that crazy feminist who tried to get Thunderfoot fired because he said something she didn't like? There's no real respect for differing opinions on any given subject anymore and people get vitriolic as shit when you say something they don't like. It doesn't even have to necessarily pertain to politics, it can be about literally anything. I've had people literally tell me I deserve to be shot because I gave Black Panther a negative review. How fucking insane do you need to be to even type that kind of bullshit? And recently, a couple right-wingers went out to get breakfast one day, and a bunch of SJWs literally screamed at them. Like, no arguments, no conversation, no civility whatsoever, just fucking screaming like retarded monkeys for no reason. <laughs> And the beautiful thing is, is that the same people who do this have no idea how much ammo they're giving the opposition. By banning Alex Jones from four major sites, his app has gained somewhere around six million new followers. By banning someone, you show the world two things. One, that they have opinions that you're afraid of and you don't have actual rebuttals against, so you think silencing them is the only way to win. And two, that your enemy is now the victim and his opinions obviously must deserve more credit. You can't just try and fuck with someone's freedom of speech and expression. As soon as you decide to try and shut them down, you're helping their cause. Like, fucking nobody gave even half a shit about Jordan Peterson, and most people had never even heard of him until a bunch of nutjobs who believe in 72 genders started treating him like he was some subhuman neo-fascist. You actually only helped him get to the position he's in now by acting like morons. And now, the same thing is happening with Alex Jones. Yes, the guy who literally called Obama a demon because a fly landed on his shoulder one time. The guy who repeatedly denies that the Sandy Hook shooting ever happened, who came up with some 
some crazy conspiracy about Pizzagate, and who claims that the freaking frogs are gay! Which is a twisted half-truth that he runs with because he genuinely thinks the government is putting chemicals in the water to eventually turn the whole world gay. And now that guy is going to be a martyr for free speech. I don't know whether to feel disappointed in our entire species or to laugh my fucking ass off. But hey, I guess I should congratulate the SJWs for just outright lacking any form of self-awareness and making Alex Jones of all people a fucking martyr. But to pull this whole meandering ramble together, freedom of speech and expression, no matter what side it's on, is important. Lying about your opposition, trying to get them banned for saying something you don't like, and censoring them from numerous huge social media accounts isn't going to help your side. It makes you look like the scary little bitch that can't handle another person's opinion. It makes them look like victims and gives them more credibility, even if they don't actually deserve it. The fact that companies are caving to the pressure of easily offended children is a worrying sign. The fact that these companies are now colluding together behind the scenes to take down people with differing opinions is terrifying. That's the sign of an approaching totalitarian state where you're criminalized for having an opinion that defies the status quo. I know I'm probably gonna get comments saying I'm overreacting to all of this, but you really gotta realize we live in a world where a fucking pug raising his paw during a Hitler video is seen as hate speech. We live in a world where some vindictive asshat can take things said years prior out of context or withhold valuable context to push a false narrative. People will now dox you, attack you, literally kidnap and torture you, and do anything and everything they can to silence whatever it is you're saying. If the internet's taught me anything, it's that people are vindictive as shit, and even if you didn't do anything to them personally, they will make up whatever the fuck they want and go to absolute absurd lengths to try and ruin your life. If we can't start trying to take context and nuance into account, if we can't start trying to have actual civil discourse without accusing people of being Nazis or racists, then holy shit are we in a world of trouble. The right to free speech and expression is important and it should be protected. I'm not saying that we should force websites to abide by First Amendment principles, but I think that they should hold themselves to those principles, just as all of us should. So I know this video is a bit more of a ramble than I usually post, it's just been something that's been on my mind lately and I figured I'd talk about it. My review on Agony is almost finished, I have all the footage recorded and the audio is all set, so I'm hoping to have that finished and uploaded by Sunday at the latest. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Go watch furry porn or something.